All right, even though the wall long black shelves have a lot of stuff on them, we can kind of go through that pretty quickly. Um, again, unless you guys want to take a closer look at anything, definitely let us know when we can. We have a small collection of 3DS games right here. Something that I like to do just to give people an idea of what we have is even on the digital games, I will make just a, a terrible example with the AR games, but I will make false covers. And we got some uh, extra cases that we get from our local game stuff. And I put those on the shelf, again, just so people could come over and say, hey, what do you have to play? Well, this is it. But we also have like 30 downloads. Right below that, we have a couple of 3DO games, just in regular jewel cases, since we don't have the long the long boxes for them. Uh, just some fun little things, little Qbert and uh, what's his name? Just Coil the Snake in Qbert. Um, an old Chrono Cross clock. I got that from Square's Summer of Adventure. It was a big deal, I think, back in 2000 for the release of Chrono Cross, Legend of Mana, and Threads of Fate. So that was a big deal. Uh, a couple of Fire Emblem characters, Amiibo, right below that. And then we have just some other collectibles. A Pac-Man 8-bit Pale Ale can. A collection of uh, Legend of Zelda manga manga and it's kind of a nice set because it goes through a lot of different games from phantom hourglass minish cap link to the past four swords the oracle games majora's mask and ocarina of time i also have a fun japanese one and even though the other ones i can read this one not so much so uh but a lot of times you can look at the picture and get a fair idea of what's going on um, below there, we have a few collectible tins for the Wii U uh, NES controller. There's uh, Strider being attacked by some tentacles. And the rest of the shelf down are just all of our loose Atari 2600 games. I'm definitely not going to take that much of a closer look on those, unless, of course, you guys want to. Next to the 3DS, we have all of our DS games. They come down a few shelves and over into the next one with the uh, personal trainer walker, I believe with some pedometers. And below that is the Star Trek Phaser Strike complete in box. Now this was from the uh, very first handheld with interchangeable cartridges. And if we cannot kill Vivi and Zidane, the neat thing is this thing is huge so you get the whole cartridge the screen as well as the button layout and everything it's for the micro vision like i said we've got the book in there it's not much else for the box to have but when we saw the star trek one being somewhat trekkies maybe a lot of trekkies we had to get that also, fun fact, very first Star Trek game ever made on a... Oh, that is right. That is the very first Star Trek game. Who would have thought some forgettable handheld is where Star Trek started their gaming career? <laughs> Below there, you have the tail end of the PS3 games, and as we continue down the shelves, you'll be able to see more and more of those. Right below the PS3 are the PSP games. Again, that thing kills my hand, so I don't have a whole lot of games for those. I have tried to get some of the, the better ones, like Metal Gear Acid, you Acid, as well as the Patapon games, because they're a lot of fun. Uh, the Secret Agent Clank, I love the Ratchet and Clank series. Of course, I've got a Grand Theft Auto game. Uh, Death Junior was supposed to be a really fun platformer, I believe. And then below that, as we keep on going down, we have some of the Mario Kart cart figurines. Now, I think that these were uh, some McDonald's toys that came out when Mario Kart 8 first came out on the Wii U. We also have some loose and television games and then the start of the Atari games. On the very bottom, we have some loose Odyssey 2 games. And these things are such a pain to put on the shelf because you you have those handles. Yeah, but how cool are cartridges with <laughs> handles? That makes a brilliant I mean, idea. it's kind of neat, but it's, it's impossible to put any kind of end label on there to be able to see what you have, because even if you put it on there, the handles are, are going to hide that. Along with the Atari games, one of the cool ones we have is the Double Ender. Yes, back in the day, you wanted to play your Atari games and have more than one, you had to literally have more than one because it's 
it's a cartridge on either end. Down here, as we move over a little, these are all the PS1 games. We have just a couple, hello Paul, just a couple in the long box. Of course, we have the, uh, the collectible Lunar games, both of those. And these are cool because they have the making of, the little documentaries, the, uh, uh, what are they, the soundtracks. Uh, usually they put in something cool like a pendant or a map, just neat little stuff like that. And the Switch games are sending everybody off. As you can see, just a small collection of Switch games. And a couple of uh, video game soundtracks. Like I said, for the Summer of Adventure, I got the uh, Sound Selection CDs. And again, for Chrono Cross, Legend of Mana, Threads of Fate. And all these are, they were just uh, given out actually if you pre-ordered the game. And they just have a couple of the uh, tracks from the games in them. I have a great Final Fantasy VII soundtrack with the Amano artwork, which wasn't very often associated with Final Fantasy VII. I think it was, uh, was it Nomura who did all of the art for the game? And of course the Chrono Trigger soundtrack because it has some fantastic music. Now with the PS1 games, if you guys want a closer look, definitely let us know and I can give you a closer look. Since they're in the jewel cases, there's a lot of those. But back up here, the PS3 games continue. We uh, have some fun downloadable titles that aren't available anymore, like The Simpsons Arcade. That's a shame. As well as right next to it, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. So here's hoping we don't kill our PS3 anytime soon and lose those forever. Next up, we have a our Game Boy Advance collection. And uh, we have a few things in the boxes, like the Zelda Link to the Past Four Swords. Uh, you may have noticed that we actually have a lot of these in DS cases. So this is why we pick up all of the DS cases from our local GameStop. Because I found this great site called CD Covers or The Cover Project. It may have been both, actually. And they do these really nice covers. It gives it kind of a front-of-the-box look. And it gives it a nice spine. What I really like is the spine because it does distinguish what system it's for. So Game Boy Advance. And of course the title. And the back shows off the game just like it would with the regular box. Now with the DS cases, the nice thing is they already had slots in the top for Game Boy Advance games. So those fit in there very nice. Now the whole purpose of this is to get all of our handheld games on the shelf in a displayable manner. Instead of... Uh, the more practical ideas of putting them in binders or anything else. I love those ideas because they do not take up as much space as this, but it is harder to see what you have. And no one really wants to, you know, thumb through pages after pages of a binder. It becomes a little more tricky, though, when you get to things like the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy games. That's when you have to take a Dremel tool and you cut out a few places within the case but you can still make them fit in there pretty nicely. They're fairly secure. They're not bouncing around or anything. And again, you have that, uh, that nice cover, and the nice spine that I'm messing up. So you have that nice spine, have it on your shelf. It's nice and easy to see what you have. I love doing this for all of our handhelds, but uh, like I said, it does start taking up the room really fast. Uh, again, over here, we have some of the Game Boy games. Since we don't have very many in boxes, we just kind of made our false covers for them so that people could see what we have and play those. Uh, my wife, one of her favorite games, Dr. Mario. So, of course, we have it on just about everything you can have it on. And why not the Game Boy boxed version as well? Hey, you got Chrono Trigger on everything, including your iPhone that we don't have anymore. <laughs> And just as a size comparison, the North American Game Boy boxes versus the Japanese, they didn't waste a lot of space like we did. Below all of the Game Boy Color games are the few loose 5200 games that we have. And uh, if you saw the video already, it's like Kill Amiibo. One of my wife's favorites, Qbert. And then underneath the Game Boy games, we have some 7800 games like 
one-on-one -on -one basketball. Was that like Larry Bird on there, I think? We have better classics like Mario Brothers for the 7800. Which, when you think about it, is interesting. Yes, it was an arcade game, but by the time the 7800 came out, the NES was on the market. So Nintendo didn't really need to put their games on other systems. We also have a couple of the uh, Tandy computer, the TI-99 cartridges, like Poltergeist. So if you've ever wondered if they're back in computer form, they are. Of course, uh, you know, you're probably seeing Amiibo all over the place, whether up top or uh, the Zelda ones sprinkled in, the Guardian one. The PS3 games still continue. And as per everything else, we do have the false covers for the uh, downloaded games that we have, the digital versions. Now, the ones that have a physical version, I would like to get the actual physical version to get rid of the downloaded ones. One, for the shelf, put the real game up there, but also to get the uh, space freed up on our system, which might help. Below the PS3 now, we are beginning on the PS4. We have some nice ones, like Song of the Deep. This was the collectible one that came with the storybook. And then, of course, uh, you can start seeing some of the limited run games. And below that, at the very bottom, are some more PS1 games, as well as lots of little cars. I don't know if you guys have been seeing the Hot Wheels cars, but you have some for, like, the classic arcades, like Pong or Mario-themed ones. Check out the Bowser one with the spikes on the top and everything. It's pretty sharp. Show the Yoshi one. I love that one. He's got an egg in his trunk. So it's a truck. It looks He's like a Yoshi, tow truck, I think. But then he has the egg. Yeah. <laughs> that one's my favorite. Continuing on with the handhelds, we have the Game Gear. Again, in the uh, nice DS cases. I will say, though, the handheld or the Game Gear games are a little trickier to get to fit inside. You have to be very clever with where you Dremel out a spot for them so that they're not sliding around and so that you can actually get the case to cover. But again, you have the nice front, the nice back, and of course that spine, again dictating that it is a Game Gear game up at the top, which is very nice. Uh, we have a couple of box games. Oddly enough, the Game Gear boxes almost always, we find them smashed, which is, I don't know, that's kind of bizarre. Well, they're cardboard. Well, I guess so. <laughs> Someone's sitting on them at some point. Well, I'm pretty sure they stacked stuff on them. Systems, whatever. We, uh, we also have the Game Gear Game Genie, which the size of this thing is ridiculous when you consider how big the Game Gear itself already is. Like, like you really want to make that thing any larger than it already is. Below that, I'm sorry, I was calling these uh, Tandy and TI-99. I believe it was because we were right next to the TI-99 cartridges with things like... Blasto, and no, he is not related to the PS1 Blasto, voiced by Phil Hartman. Uh, of course, the only thing these things have are that end label. There's no artwork on them otherwise. The PS3 games ever continue onward and below them, so the PS4 games. We're uh, starting to get a fair collection of those. Now it's just finding the time to actually play some of those. When you're playing games like Fallout series and The Witcher, it doesn't leave a whole lot of time to play any other game. More collectible tins, whether it's Pac-Man, with uh, little mints in them, Superstars, Sonic, you got some Ghosts, you got a PSP one, you got some fun little plushies, like a Dry Bones. Uh, <laughs> you gotta save, gotta save everything, so your SpaghettiOs, Mario's. Yeah, with Mario and Goomba shapes inside. Show the wolf from Metal Gear. Oh, yes. Look at this guy. Oh, he's only got one eye. He must be a sniper wolf. Oh, Ooh, that wolf of mine. I have a Oops. couple of collectible trading cards of some uh, gamers like Steve Weeby, the other King of Kong, if, uh, you know, Billy Mitchell or whatever. Stop beating him, as well as uh, Fatality with the one in there for the eye. We have some uh, some old unopened Pac-Man cards. Whatever shall we do with these? Sounds like there's something inside, though. 
We have a <laughs> Dimitri from Darkstalkers figure. Who knew that that game was popular enough to merit a Darkstalkers toy? We have a Pac-Man oven mitt. So you can grab your power pellets straight from the oven without burning your... Let me see hand. that real quick. I want to try to hold it to the camera. If you can see, inside his little mouth is the Pac-Man game, though. I always thought that was kind of neat. And on the very bottom shelf is our super small paltry Dreamcast collection. Of course, you've got some good ones like Shinmu in there. Uh, somewhere along the bottom, there's Seaman if you want to talk to a little fish man. That but... game's creepy if anybody's ever looked <laughs> at it. It's weird. Unfortunately, I don't come across a whole lot of Dreamcast games unless they're sports titles. It's because everybody copied and burned them. <laughs> and even then, it's hard to pay like the 5 to $10 that usually people want for them. We do have a small group of ColecoVision games right here, as well as some more uh, Mario Soup. And just a couple of the Atari 400 and 800 cartridges beneath the PS4 games. We have some more 7800 games. Oddly enough, not with the others. I don't know what my deal is. A couple of Virtual Boy games. Again, in the DS packaging. So they look nice on the shelves, even if they don't look nice to your eyes. Next to them, we have our uh, small collection of TurboGrafx-16 games. Recently, we got the full case, the book and the actual case for Splatterhouse. See, if you watch nice. that one video that we had the pickup of it, we were talking about the Jason mask. If I can get the camera to focus. There we go. See? See the Jason mask? That's great. The other thing I noticed about this cover, it looks like the uh, Goosebumps font. I could see that. I have it on pretty good authority that this collection will be growing very soon, by the way. Finally, the top of the shelf, next to the other Zelda amiibo, we have some Neo Geo Pocket games in the DS case. And the final part are some Atari Lynx games, like Zybots. Now, the cool thing about the Lynx games, if you've never seen them, they are very thin. So you have like that nice cover piece, but then they're just this thin card. Of course, the later ones had a lip. I believe the first run games did not have that lip, so you could very easily stack them. What's also nice about that is, because they're so thin, you can just put them wherever in the case, and once you close it, they're not really moving around. A couple of PC games that are loose. We had some box ones earlier that we just kind of skimmed over. We do have a small collection of CDI games. Uh, of course, you have all the classics like the... Uh... Oh, look at that. Dragon's Lair on another system. And uh, we do have... Two of the three infamous, terrible Zelda games. Oh, my boy. They're so bad. I wonder what Ganon's up to. And below those are the final bit of PS3 and PS4 games leading down to the floor with just some other collectible goodies and toys. There's our Walmart thing. Our Walmart... Uh... DS display thingy. Oh, yes. So we found this at Walmart, and it is perfect to put right on the corner. Show off my Eevee sword. I don't even know how it works. I think there's a knife in there somewhere. Where... Ooh. So, of course, you have the knife there, and the knife here. That's not a knife. That's a cane. <laughs> with a rook's head on it. Because they were rooks. I get it now. Now, we have shown off the Wii and Wii U rack before. Uh, another one of the larger, but still one of the cool things that we got from GameStop. It's got the nice metal shelves and everything. We were lucky enough to get it with the crown so we could display some games, as well as the marquees, both top and the side. We do not have a huge Wii U collection. Uh, just a few games, but we've got some good ones. Um, again, we do the false covers for games that we have digitally, so with like Shantae, great series by the way. And I've also put some of our big boxes here, so they don't take, as up, take up as much space on the other shelves. Uh, they're kind of placeholders for right now, 
as we fill the shelf up, they'll probably be relegated to the back and we won't see them anymore. But we do have some of the bigger 3DS boxes, the massive Mega Man one, uh, of course the bigger Wii U boxes, a lot of which came with Amiibo, and then we have a Tupperware with our Sega floppies that we showed off in a game pickup video. Sweet Buster Sword, man. It is a Sweet Buster Sword! Ready to limit break, I love this thing! <laughs> Although, this pales in comparison to if I could get a real one, my Irish Mike. If you do not know who Irish Mike is, he does big, giant swords, you've got to check him out. Look him up on YouTube. If I think about it, I'll try to get a link in the description below. He is awesome. His TV show needs to come back. On the other side, we have some of the Wii games. Uh, we've got some good ones thrown in there, obviously. Of course, you got your classics like your Metroid Prime Trilogy in the nice steel book. I do not have the uh, the overlay though. Of course the uh, Mario and Zelda games and near the bottom we have a few of the bigger boxes like the one that came with Mario Kart Wii that came with the Wii wheel and uh, of course the ones that we've shown off before Red Steel 2 the last story in the bigger boxes. I'll tell you what, one of my bigger disappointments was the 25th anniversary Super Mario All-Stars. I was so stoked to get this for the Wii and so disappointed that it was literally just a port of Super Mario All-Stars from Super Nintendo. And it wasn't even the one that had Super Mario World in it as well. I was so sad by that. I love my Mario games, but give me a little more, especially when I'm paying full price for it. We also have the Mario Galaxy commemorative coin which is always sliding out, so as soon as I open this, it's not going to be there! <laughs> it's... But it's in there. It's simply not glued. So you uh, take a closer look, you can see Mario with a little Luma flying around. And on the back side, just the Super Mario Galaxy logo. So that's kind of neat. It's always fun to find little collectibles like that, that a lot of times people forget about. Whoa! That's a lot of games! <laughs> and consoles! That's so much stuff! Yeah. <laughs> so, this video idea took way longer than I expected. Um, I initially had the idea of doing our 100th video as the game room. Not in three parts, either. Uh, I really was trying to go through everything really quickly. That was what was so funny about it, was that we were really speeding through things. <laughs> so, I definitely apologize if it got boring at any point. Uh, the funny thing is, though, I did notice that once I got to this section, the black shelves, it was like I didn't even care anymore. It's like, there's some PlayStation games. There they are. What's the matter? You run out of steam? I very much ran out of steam, Piranha Plant. Oh, no. Maybe you should eat more Mario's. <laughs> it's good advice. <laughs> run out of steam, eat you some Mario's. Ow, ow, ow. But, uh... How about... Toads. Can you eat toads? You can eat them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you guys have been really great with the comments and everything. I knocked over ten blocks. <laughs> on, <our, laughs> on the first two parts uh, with the consoles and then the wooden shelves and everything. Uh, and I really love seeing all those comments and everything. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if there's anything that you would like a closer look at, for instance, if you really want to see more of what we have as far as like PS1 games or anything mm -hmm. like that, don't hesitate to let us know. Um, even if you just want some pictures or something, let us know that yeah. in the comments. If you don't think it needs a video, just want to see some pictures, we'll take some pictures. We'll get them up on Facebook and Instagram and all of that goodness. Uh, but otherwise, whew, there's actually a lot of stuff that I feel like we left out. Uh, strategy guides. We never yeah. did look at the totes under the futon with the sports games. Yeah. Uh, but there were plenty of other things. I honestly feel like we could have easily do a part four to this video so if you want that i can but if you like whoa that's enough just just uh, either way let us know yeah i don't have anything else to say it's not my tour yet yes i think it's her turn next what do you guys think you who guys... wants who wants to see the toy room there's a lot of toys in all there. the toys <laughs> All right, guys, of course, if you like this video, be sure to like it, and we love hearing your comments, so leave a comment down below, and, uh... Subscribe to our channel. Yeah, uh, tell your friends we're, we're a bunch of weirdos with a lot of junk. Yeah. Facebook, Instagram, we're there, too. Yes, and we've got a bunch of 
new and exciting stuff coming up pretty soon. We so keep saying that, stay but... Stay uh, tuned. This but time we actually do. Eventually we'll get there. <laughs> we do. We have a weekend trip coming up of some certain visual aids item that might be a lot of fun. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> We've never been to it yet, so... Bye, nerdlings! Bye, nerdlings! Anything that you wanted to give, like, kind of a closer look at? Yeah, that's it. Oh. Hello. <laughs> that's great. You should totally use that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, what are you doing, Dad? <laughs>